Welcome to the Blue Bee Quilters Box. No flakes are falling tutorial. Hello. We're going to go over the tutorial. This is what you're going to be painting. Snowflakes are falling. I painted one side so you could already see it finished. Your boards are already drawn. You have Midnight Blue, Ingle Nook, Raw Silk, your three brushes, painter's tape. You're going to need something to wipe off your hands just in case. What we're going to do is we're going to start taping our project. What you're going to do is you're going to, we're going to do the ingle nick first, which is I'm indicating right at the moment. So you're going to take your tape and you're going to paint, excuse me, you're going to tape the exterior of your paint lines. So this is the outside of your edges. Now, if you notice, I am taking my tape, it's going over the line. I fold it back to the line and I just press a seam. So you're going to go outside, if you notice, outside your paint line. Here on the seam, I am on that press mark. You can very easily just rip your tape. You can also use scissors and later on in this tutorial, I will use scissors, but you just press your tape up against your paint line and you just fold it back. Make sure that you do press it. And I always use my nail um, to make a crisp seam. As you can see, we are taping all of our ingle nook where we're going to paint ingle nook. Once again, fold up against that paint line and press a seam. You're going to go every other block for your ingle nook. So there is a picture within your kit that you can use as a reference. And sometimes what I like to do is just put an X in the area that I'm going to um, paint or tape. I always have paint on my hands because I'm painting all the time. So I apologize for um, when I do that. But sometimes I have to stop the camera because I do have dogs and they need mama's attention. So we are going to go around on the exterior of that paint line you're going to place your tape. You can find your own rhythm when you are taping off your project. Um, what I mean finding your own rhythm is however you want to paint, tape your areas just so your area is completely taped off. This is really going to help you when painting your project and get really crisp lines. But you don't have to exactly go in the order that I am doing. Um, you can go in whatever order. I always just go around my board. Um, it helps me just with my pattern. Um, so I'm going every other one. Also, I do highly advise that you will want to tape all the areas for the one color. Um, it does make it a lot easier um, when you're painting because then you can paint a whole area first. And you're going to do a couple um, passes with your paint. So you're going to do your base coat and then you will paint the area one more time. So taping the whole entire area is very beneficial um, because then you um, can paint the whole area at one time. So we are already done um, with the ingle nook. So we're going to take our ingle nook paint. That is the green blue tint paint. They are labeled on the top and I always put my foam brush, dab it onto my lid and all you're going to do is you're dabbing at this point. You are not painting at this point, but you're dabbing halfway on that paint line and halfway on your project line. This helps seal those tape lines and prevents from bleeds. So you're just dabbing half on your paint line and half on your project line on the wood. And this does help seal that tape so you can get those nice crisp edges and the reason why you dab off 
before you paint on your project is to make sure that you're not using too much paint on your project because a little effusion of mineral paint goes a very long way. This is a high pigmented and it is a very um, solid, I guess is a good word, um, paint. So you, uh, very little goes a very long way. So you don't want to over um, paint your project. Now, since that is dried, you're gonna want your, um, to let that seal dry. When it, Once it is dry, you're just going to paint. Once again, I'm dabbing off, so I'm not having too much paint on my project. The um, Honestly, the least amount of paint is better, so less is definitely more, um, and we are going to go over this with a second coat. And as long as your paint and your tape lines are sealed, then you can go ahead and comfortably paint the interior of your project right there. I always rest my brush in my paint. Um, that way it doesn't dry out um, while it dries. I, You're going to let this your first coat dry for like 10 to 15 minutes, and then you can go over it again with your second coat. Um, Fusion Mineral Paint dries um, quickly. And um, if you have very little humidity, it's going to dry very quick. And you can tell if it's dry um, as if you touch it, if it still feels cold, then most likely the under layers of the paint are not dry. If it feels room temperature, then the whole um, layer of paint is dry. So you're going to just go ahead and put your second coat on and then let that dry and just touch each one and like i said if it feels warm or room temperature then it is dry so you're just going to remove that tape i would highly advise to save this tape because at, when you see um when i take for the raw silk i am using the same tape that way you're not wasting tape and it's good i always like to use it twice um, but you're just going to pull that tape up and look at those nice crisp lines um, and now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and lay our tape down for our raw silk once again the exterior part of our paint line so you're going to lay that right on that pencil mark and the exterior part of the paint line I always like to use the edge that has not been painted on. Um, if you noticed, uh, I have a clean edge up against the area that I'm going to paint next. And that way I know that I'm gonna get a solid seal on that. Make sure you run a finger across your um, tape to make sure that there's a good seal on your base, your board prior to doing your painting. So we're just gonna finish this up, finish taping. From beginning to end, this project generally, if you're experienced, is gonna take you about an hour. But you can do these in layers. So you can do just the angle nook and then remove your tape. I highly suggest if you're gonna do it in different settings to make sure that you remove your tape um, prior to getting up. You don't want it to set too long because that tape will try to adhere um, to, and then this is where I messed up because we are not painting the angle nook again. We're painting the raw silk, so you'll notice I'll change that tape right there. Um, to the actual raw silk area. So the beauty of doing craft projects with paint is you can, if you make an oops, you can always go ahead and paint over it. 
So there's really no oopses in painting. It's just a whole lot of fun. So relax and enjoy the process. And it's super gorgeous when it is done. So we're taping the areas for our raw silk like we did for our ingle nook. And we're just gonna go ahead and press all of our seams and make sure that they are um, adhered to our baseboard. Then we're getting our raw silk. I'm gonna do the same process, getting our brush, dabbing it just the tip in and sealing our edges um, to make sure that we get a nice crisp line. Make sure that you're only using the tip of your brush and you're always dabbing off so you can make sure that you're not getting too much paint on your baseboard um, because remember less is honestly more and you can always do multiple layers if you are not satisfied with your coat that you have of paint but less is always more is always better so we're going to go ahead and seal our um, edges <laughs> And then uh, there is a time lapse <laughs> between each um, frame. So now we are going to go ahead and paint in our raw silk. We're painting in that quilt block right there. And we're gonna do that for the remaining um, quilt block pieces right there. And remember less is always um, best when you're painting because we will once again do a second coat. Okay, we do have some time lapses in here. So we're gonna go ahead and paint our second coat and you're just going to let it dry once again until it feels to the touch um, room temperature or about 15 minutes. And another reason why you want to make sure that you're not using too much paint is with Fusion Mineral Paint, it is a self-leveling paint. Now that's self-leveling if you're not using too much paint. So it is beautiful because it, um, if you're not using too much paint, it um, will actually dry flat. Um, and now we're gonna go ahead and remove our tape. And now I'm gonna discard this tape um, because I have used it twice. It's up to you if you want to use it three times. That's that's fine. I just always like to have a fresh, fresh edge where I'm going to paint. Now we're going to tape the larger area. And this will take the most amount of time because this um, does have the most angles. And so we're going to take paint. Sorry, excuse me. We're going to tape the remaining area. And I'm sorry, I am off camera a little bit on this. Um, but we're going to do the exact same thing. I decided to go ahead and get scissors. It's easier on this part because there are a lot of angles. You are going to remember fold back, do a seam with your nails, and then I just go ahead and cut along that seam line. And then it lines up a lot better on my edge. So you're just going to go ahead and um, put your tape over your painted surface on this part and pull it back. Put a seam with your fingernail such as this and then cut along that seam line and then lay it back down. We are gonna go ahead and fill in. So we're gonna cover, completely cover our ingle nook and raw silk to make sure that none of our midnight blue bleeds over onto um, our snowflake. I love these colors together. It is absolutely stunning. Um, and it's, I think the color story is a very relaxing color story, very similar to a 
winter snowfall. Hence, snowflakes are falling. Now on your boards, you'll notice that we've already put the hooks at the um, top um, with a barn quilt block. As you know, um, some blocks actually do have a true top if it is a, um, a scene. This one does not have a true top, but um, we did put the hooks on it already for you so you can hang it from your uh, mailbox or you can hang it from a pole. We will show a picture on our Willis Farms Facebook page of it hanging from a pole. Um, we do carry those poles if you're interested that you can um, screw into your house, just let us know and we'll send you pricing for that. You also have the chains to hang it from your mailbox and you're just gonna have to add a couple of hooks at the bottom of your mailbox um, if you do want to hang it there. I went ahead and just quickly um, taped the other three. I'm gonna show you the fourth, but once again, you're going to take your tape on the interior side, covering up the painted area that you've already painted and you're going to do that on all of this um, so you can paint it midnight blue. You are going to want to make sure that the paint does go to the outside line of your design. So the only area that is exposed is the raw wood because you're going to be painting over this whole entire um, piece to complete it. And we're going to paint it with the midnight blue. Now, if you want to change the areas for your colors, feel free to do so. This is your project. And I absolutely love that people make these their own. So if you want your snowflakes to be midnight blue and inglenook and have the larger area of the raw silk i think that would just be absolutely wonderful um this is your project so with your color story feel free to change it up however you want so it reflects you we also sell um testers so we have our testers are an ounce and I think just a little bit over an ounce. I think it's an ounce and a fourth and they are $4.99. They're listed on our website. So if you want to paint one side one way and the other side another color story, feel free to do so. And by being a Blue Bee Quilter member, you will actually receive a 10% discount on all your purchases that you purchase online, excluding the quilter boxes. Now I did run my finger over the edges and I am once again going to seal my tape seams. So half on the tape and half on the board. The midnight blue is a very deep color. I forgot to actually um, tape off my frame. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. You're going to need to tape your frame as well. So it is just going around the frame edge and applying tape and making sure that seals really well. That way you don't get um, any of the midnight blue on your frame. And we just thought it um, framed, it gave it a really nice finish look. And so all of our um, Blue Bee Quilters uh, membership kits will come framed because we think it's such a beautiful um, finished look to it. And hey, if you want to display it on your, um, in your house, you don't even have to make, hang it from a mailbox. You can just display it from your house um, on a shelf because these are 12 by 12s and they're just perfect also for shelf displays. So you're going to want to go along um, the taped edge um, completely around your whole entire project and seal those edges half on the tape and half on the baseboard. This video is, um, 
I think it's at one and almost two times the speed. So this actually, it's not, not two time. Um, so I wanted to speed it up a little bit. So this video was, um, condensed. So, uh, but just take your time with this and you're going to dab off, load your brush, dab off a little bit, and then go around all of those, um, tape and base areas. Just make sure that you are not putting too much paint on your brush because if it dries, it will give a textured area if you have too much paint. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and there was a lapse between that to allow our edges to dry and we are going to go ahead and paint our first coat. And if you notice, I did miss a spot, but I'm going to, um, on my tape and base coat area, I will get that really quick. Well, actually, I just painted over. I guess I just didn't care. And if you don't want to tape off, make sure that you're starting from the paint, the tape area and pulling towards your um, base area, your voided area. Um, you never want to go from your raw wood area, your base area into the tape because you may push paint underneath your tape accidentally. This Midnight Blue definitely needs a second coat. So um, we're putting a first coat on it and your very little paint. Um, we're just doing a base coat on this and the base coat helps seal the wood and then also just gives us um, our base surface. And then the second coat is actually what gives it the true pigment um, and finishing touch of our project. So we're letting, we let that dry and now we're going over with our second coat. Remember not to use too much paint. Um, a little goes a very long way. So you definitely absolutely have enough paint in your kit um, to finish this project and a little bit more. So you'll have um, extras in this project for sure. You'd be able to do a little side project to go along with this one. We do have crafters kits that are fun, um, available and soon we'll be selling 3d art that I think will be stunning on top of these barn quilts. So we are now, um, just pulling all of our tape. Make sure that you let your base coat dry. A lot of people say that you can, um, do a wet pull. Um, but if you do a wet pull, you may come into accidentally, um, your wet tape um getting paint on your project and you want to make sure that you're not getting any bleed over onto your project so we are just doing our pull and there it is ta-da it's done thanks so much and i hope that